I'm okay. I'm totally fine. Hello everybody and welcome back to Topic Tuesday. Today's topic is a tutorial on the basics of perspective. And I mean the basics. If you've been on other perspective tutorials, you'll have noticed they begin with one point perspective using a vanishing point on a horizontal line. This is of course the horizon, but they never really tell you where to put it. Well, try to remember this. The picture you're making is through the eyes of the viewer, or the cameraman if you will. This is how we see. Standing straight up when looking forward, the horizon line comes directly from the center of our line of sight. Now, if we look down, the horizon line doesn't move. Since we're still standing, it's in the same place. But from a picture standpoint, the horizon would be above our line of sight. While alternatively, if we look up, the line would be below it. And it's the same whether you're standing, kneeling, lying down on street level or on top of a skyscraper. While the horizon line is always at eye level, where you face will always alter its visual position. So, we have our horizon. Now, time to add a vanishing point. The vanishing point is where all lines meet in the furthest distance of the perspective you were looking. Let's put it dead center here. There's our vanishing point. Now let's add a building. As you can see, it's just a basic rectangle. We're looking at it dead on with the vanishing point directly behind it. So all the lines of perspective are going behind the building. So let's see what happens when we drag the rectangle down. Essentially, we are now ascending the building, and you don't see much change with the perspective until you get past the top line, which is now below the horizon line. We have risen above, and we are now looking down at the building, so now we have a roof. As you can see, the horizon line itself never changed, because we changed position, the horizon line changed with us. While we did rise up into the air, the building lowered down, our line of sight always focuses on the horizon. But for now, let's go back down to ground level. Once we are, let's move the building to the side and see what happens. While we are still facing the building, we can now see its side, and however far from the vanishing point we get, the more of the side we see. While you can have the vanishing point within the background, often having it outside of the area of the canvas we're working on can make the angles less drastically declining towards the point, and look better, as well as wider and deeper. Of course, too far and you can just end up making it a second rectangle, so there is some amount of judgement in choosing the spot of your vanishing point. So, while we have our first vanishing point, adding a second will give the illusion of a more three-dimensional perspective. Taking our flat-shaped building and imagine walking around it so that the one edge is what you are directly facing. Now we have a line as our face, and with a second vanishing point, we still have our building front, but it is now angled towards the horizon, giving us our 3D shape. As with using any vanishing point, distance away from the object is a matter of judgement. Too far or too close can have a great impact on how it will look. Sometimes it will look good, sometimes it will look bad. Just use your good judgement. So, we've been looking at our building for a while now. It's 3D and has sides, but it doesn't look very tall. Well, let's get closer. Okay, so we move forward. We can't really see much. All the perspectives are out of sight now. So let's get a third dimension kicked in and look up. As we have looked up, the horizon line has dropped way below our line of sight. It is very low. But we are presented with a new vanishing point, the one right above our heads, or the viewer's head, or the cameraman's head, however you want to see it, and can usually only be seen from extreme angles beneath us, 
or extreme angles above us. Like with the horizon line, it is fixed to the position of the viewpoint. You can't see it from a great distance because it moves with the perspective of the viewer. It is either high above us or high below us. We have to look up or down to even get close to looking at it. That is why every time you look at something straight on, they are vertical lines. Even looking straight up, the horizontal lines, as you will notice, will still go towards the horizontal vanishing points, which are far below us and out of sight and out of the canvas. But you'll also notice that the vertical lines that were once straight are now angling towards the upper vanishing point. This gives the optical illusion that the building is very tall, much taller than the perspective of the person looking at it. Again, the angles can be drastic or subtle. The further down we look without looking straight on, the higher above the top of the canvas the third vanishing point gets, and the increment of going towards it gets less and less, so looking more vertical. But of course, the closer the edges of the lines get to the vanishing point, the taller the building will look. Now I have told you about the three points of perspective. There are some things you need to know about composition. How I've described things here is from the perspective of a person, in the hopes that you can go out and draw from sight. Composing an image requires flexibility, thinking more like a camera operator than a person. Think of angle and height and perspective. Let us use an example here of a guy who stood on a corner. I've got my two-point perspective. I'm at the angle of a person just stood on the street watching this person. And he's just, well, stood there hanging out. But let's change perspective. Now it looks like he's waiting for someone to come down the road or across the street. And we're just using a one point perspective here. What about a high angle? Now he looks small, anxious, like he's in trouble or escaping someone knows that someone will come up and sneak on him. How about a low angle? He looks big and dominant, dangerous even. This is the kind of person that invokes authority and dominance. And then there are odd angles like this one. The horizon is tilted, the three points of perspective still work the same, but because you've changed the angle of the horizon, it looks different and dynamic, and you can use it to your advantage. For my final piece of advice, just remember the basics and practice, experimenting and looking for the vanishing points in photos or as you walk around. You'll get a feel for it. It may not always be easy. Using judgment to place the points can be trial and error. Sometimes they can look too plain sometimes. But as you get better and discover that objects aren't always facing the same way and require their very own additional vanishing points, you'll eventually end up being able to create unique and realistic 3D layouts and character angles. But as always, that's my thought on the matter, and if you would like to leave your own thoughts, or perhaps if you have questions on this topic, or perhaps you just simply want to say anything like, hi, or if you enjoyed this video, then comment below. Did you like how this was done? Was it simple or confusing? What other tutorials would you like to see from me? I'd like to hear from you. You can also find me on some social media. All links are below in the description. If you liked the video, please leave a like by hitting that thumbs up. I do love to see them. And if you would like to keep up to date on when I post a video, then feel free to hit that subscribe button. But for now, thank you for watching and enjoy your day.